What's up, unicyclists? My name's Corbin Dunn, and I want to teach you how to shift gears on a unicycle. I'm a former world champion unicyclist who's done adventures all around the world, including this one I filmed on the Arizona Trail. If you follow my channel for woodworking, then you might be curious how can you shift gears on a unicycle? This is a planetary transmission unicycle hub. And one guy in Switzerland, Florian Schlumpf from Schlumpf Innovations, makes this hub. It was designed in conjunction with Chris Holm, a world famous unicyclist who has his own brand of unicycles and it was made to be very durable for off-road use. Now the way it works is there's this little button on the hub that you can hit with your ankle. This pushes a shaft through the wheel, through the hub, and engages a planetary gear to give you a higher gear ratio. As it pushes that shaft through, on the other side a button pops out, and you can hit that button back with the other foot to go back to the original gear ratio. Now it has two speeds, a one-to-one -one ratio, where every revolution of your foot will do one revolution of the wheel, and about a one-to-one -one and a half ratio in the high gear, where every revolution that you do, the wheel will do about one and a half times that distance along the circumference of the wheel, so you can go a lot faster. The basic way to shift is to twist your ankle inwards on the pedal downstroke and hit the button. Now, this is easier said than done, so let's go into some more detail. First, let's talk about the shoes. Now, I feel like the shoes don't matter all that much, but some people really prefer specific brands of shoes. Specifically, the 510 Impact High Top shoe is very popular. I don't like high tops, and I think low tops actually work fine because of where the portion of the shoe actually hits the button. You don't really need the high top. The high top is nice because it protects your ankle when you fall, so if you're new to unicycling, wearing high tops can be really beneficial to prevent ankle rolls. I wear basic Vans low top skateboard shoes and the things that I think are essential in a shoe is a flat bottom that allows you to have really good grip on your pedals and that's really the main thing for me is good grip on the pedals. What's more important than shoes is the placement of your foot on the pedal. I'm wearing men's seven and a half shoes, and these are pretty small, but I can still shift even with relatively long 150 millimeter cranks. Now, shorter cranks will make it easier to shift. So if you are having trouble learning, switching to 137s or 125s will make it easier to shift. The key thing is the placement of your foot on the pedal. I used to ride my foot a little bit too far forward, and I started moving my foot a little bit further back placing the ball of my foot pretty much directly over the axle. What I later learned is this is actually a more optimum riding position for your foot, and it's preferred in the biking industry in general. Now that your foot's in the right position, you have to get a feel for the proper timing on when to shift. There's an easy way to learn this, and what you do is you move your ankle closer and closer towards the button until it starts to make a slight bit of contact with the button. It will hit it lightly and you'll kind of hear a click, click, click every revolution as your foot's going around. You can get a feel for that timing and that cadence. And eventually on those click, click, clicks, you're going to get a feel for the timing and you're just going to give it a harder click and you will shift. Here I'm over exaggerating the ankle twist just to emphasize what you're going to have to do. Now let's watch this in regular time and get a feeling for the cadence and see the actual shift. That's the basics on how to shift, but let me discuss some other important details. One of the very important details is the hub will not shift when it is under load. This means if you're applying a force with your legs as you're riding along and you try to shift, it will not actually shift until you let up that force a bit. 
I have found that it is best to hit the button with your ankle and briefly pause a bit to let the wheel catch up and perform the shift and then to continue pedaling along. Another question that may come up is which way to mount the hub in a frame? Because a unicycle is pretty much symmetrical, you could mount it on either side and put either crank on either side. So which way are you supposed to do it? The standard way to do it is to have the goal button be on the right hand side of the hub, or in other words, with your right foot, you will be shifting up to the higher gear. The silver button will be on the left hand side and shifting with your left foot will shift down back to the original one to one ratio. There's a reason why this is the standard is because if you're standing above the wheel and if you're looking down at the hub, you will be able to read the text on the hub upright and that's the standard. The question on when to shift is highly personal, depends on your wheel size and the particular terrain that you're riding. So when I ride a geared 24 or a geared 26, I generally find that I will be in one to one until I get on flats or downhill and then I like to shift in the high gear, unless it's really technical and then I'll probably be back to one on one because of how slow I'm going. For a gear 36, where I'm generally riding on the road, I find that I like to shift to the higher gear when I'm starting to go about somewhere from 10 to 12 miles per hour. So my feet is kind of getting light and a little bit high cadence. So I shift up, which lowers my cadence and I can start to go faster, particularly on flats and downhill. When I start to hit uh, uphill, I'll generally downshift around 10 miles an hour, but this depends because sometimes I just like to have a lower cadence at slower speeds because it's more comfortable for riding. So the other important thing to discuss is braking and how it affects shifting on the unicycle. So if you're braking, you're probably in the high gear, so the one to one and a half and you're slowing down. You grab the brake to slow down and you try and downshift and nothing happens. And that is because of what I said earlier the hub will not shift when it's under load. If you have a typical disc brake like this, basically it's just the same as applying a force with your legs as it is applying the brake on the disc. So it won't shift until you let up some pressure. So when you want to slow down, you're gonna have to let up on the brake a little bit, shift, and then it will actually go ahead and do the shift and they can start braking again. The interesting thing about this is the opposite is true when you have a rim brake because the rim brake is attached to the hub in a different location. So I found with rim brakes, you can actually make it shift faster by downshifting, hit the rim brake just a touch, it'll force it to shift and then you can go ahead and slow down. These are just some things to be aware of depending on the brake that you have. So another thing I wanna discuss is how to not shift. So I'm advocating an ankle twist forcefully to make it engage the button. An alternative way that I've seen people shift is by taking their foot, moving it close, and sort of rotating it inwards. Now, I find this doesn't work as well, so I do not prefer it. But you may see some people recommending that. It's just not my preference. I think it's much better to just give it a strong kick. So that's the basics on how to shift a unicycle using a geared hub. Hit like, subscribe, Comment below, it really helps me out if you just leave a comment and you like the video. It encourages me to make more videos. If you have anything you wanna see about unicycling or something else, let me know. Maybe I can make a video on it. Thanks everyone.